My my dad, even when my aunt moved out, my dad, he's actually a very decent cook. So he taught me a lot about like, okay, we have this, we have this, let's make a meal out of it. He's the king of just going into the fridge, yes. whipping up whatever we have. Like he can go in and make a meal out of nothing. That's a so real cook. That is That's a, a real, real he's cook. A, he is a good cook. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Plate Podcast. I hope you're enjoying season four as much as we are. Thank you so much for listening. We have an amazing episode today. Our guest is Emma Mala. She is co-starring in the new American Crime Story series that's on FX right now called Impeachment. It is about the uh, Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky scandal that happened in the uh, late 90s. Um, and it is uh, phenomenal series just getting started it's going week by week um and we talked to her before the series had come out so there's no spoilers in it uh, to be honest with you um she plays uh linda tripp's daughter in the series so uh we had a phenomenal chat about the show what to expect about the show uh how she got involved with it working on the set uh working with sarah paulson uh working with all the different women that are uh part of this um, particular uh, show and um, she's very proud of it. Uh, bright young star. She's got a great head on her shoulders. We talked a lot of food. She knows her stuff. And um, yeah, it's a, a great interview. You guys are really going to enjoy it. So before we get to that, um, please uh, make sure to check us out on social media. Okay. Uh, Lone Star Plate TX um, or on YouTube. If you're watching it, hit the subscribe button. That would really help us out a lot. Okay. And like and share the videos and stuff. Right. Tell people about it. So, okay, um, okay, so let's get to the interview. Uh, but before we do, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. Hi, I wanted to talk to you about other things that are on the Texas Real Food site that are just as amazing as putting in your zip code, finding the best place around you that's serving, you know, all natural, fresh, organic ingredients, all right? There's resources on there reviews, blogs, articles, and most importantly, Texas Real Food recipes. So you can find things on there that really aren't on any other site. I promise you that. And stuff that's pretty standard, but we give it a twist, right? That's the chef way. Something familiar with a twist. So we've got, for instance, cinnamon spiced hot cross buns. You can also find a great Texas strawberry cheesecake recipe. Just amazing stuff. So please check it out at texasrealfood.com. All right, back to the show. All right, guys, let's get to this interview. Um, you know, as always, don't forget, check out the show, Impeachment. It's on FX. Uh, I think you can stream it on Hulu as well. Um, and yeah, just follow along with the show. So this interview is uh, with Emma Moloff, who is um, Linda Tripp's daughter, again, on the show. And um, yeah, phenomenal interview. So check it out. Here's our talk with Emma. Enjoy. How's your day going so far? It's been great. We've had a, I've had a couple other interviews today. So nice. yeah, it's been really fun. Nice. So you're already talking about that. You're already in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right on. I like that. We're in the okay. zone. That's how we say. So you're, you're originally from Seattle, right? Yeah. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, and then uh, moved to Austin when I was 10. Oh, wow. And now yeah. you're, uh, you're living in, in LA, correct? Yes. Right. And then three years ago, moved to Los Angeles. That's hot. Like, hey, that's a lot of moving. I like that. Cultured, I know. Traveled. <laughs> hey, that's All good, over the place. Right? No, that's a good thing. Yeah. You'll, you'll appreciate it uh, later on for sure. I've yeah, I love a lot it. And, I, right? It's great. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my my mom, we would 
you know, always move houses every three years. So never really stayed in one spot for more than three years. And I guess that <laughs> that goes for states as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what was the biggest difference? Like when you moved from Seattle to Austin, let's say. Um, I don't know. You know, it was interesting because I mean, first of all, didn't know a soul. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> didn't know anyone when we moved to Austin, but the culture, you know, I feel like the culture is very similar in Austin to both Los Angeles and Seattle. Uh, people here are very eclectic, but very friendly. And, um, you know, as a kid, it was just, it was a whole new world and it was exciting and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You, you didn't get the typical, everybody's, uh, you know, on a horse shooting a yes. six shooter in the which air, right? you know that's what what we thought we were shocked when we didn't yeah. see a tumbleweed <laughs> yeah <laughs> because... <laughs> totally I had no idea. Yeah. yeah that's funny yeah that's funny uh okay so well that's great so what what uh i always ask people what are their favorite places to eat in austin what are your what are some of your like hot spots in austin to go Listen. get something to eat Acting, Austin, and food are like my favorite things in the whole world. <laughs> my three favorite things. I am a huge foodie. Okay. And um, so let's see my favorite places to eat in Austin. I love Emmer and Rye. Emmer and yeah, Rye wow. is Great fantastic. Spot. Yes. Love Emmer and Rye. Um, obviously, ramen. Ramen Tatsuya is fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sway. I love Sway. 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 Yes. Sway yes. is delicious um i also really like elizabeth street cafe i think have you have you been there? yeah of course yeah, yeah. i lived Love. in austin seven years i had a food yeah. truck there uh for five years yeah. uh, a couple was... Uh, it was called boca, boca. I, was, I was i was yeah. on rainy street and uh south lamar and barton springs right behind yeah. tom's market uh but there's yeah. a hotel there now but before that hotel we were there Anyway. One of, when we first moved to Austin, there was no such thing as food trucks really in Seattle. And so when we first moved to Austin, it was so fun because this whole new world opened up and yes. little 10 year old me was like, this is the coolest thing <laughs> I have ever experienced in my whole life. There's food trucks here. And um, one of the first food trucks I ever went to was short bus subs. I don't know. I remember if that. Yeah. The food, they had the, um, the yellow school bus, yes, right? Is that yellow, what you're talking about? The yes. yellow school bus. Yeah. Yep, right yep. there on South Congress. I know exactly um, what you're talking about. Yeah. And I They're remember, not they're not like, around anymore. Yeah, I don't think they're there anymore. Unfortunately, yes. I know. Yeah. But we yep. took the duck tours of Austin when we first <laughs> moved. And then we went to short bus subs. That's funny. And then Gordo's Donuts. We went oh, yeah, to their Gordo's. food truck. Classic. So they're still good. around. Yeah, yeah. That's some good stuff for sure. Yeah, there's yeah. so many so many food trucks and trailers and mm -hmm. it's quite a community in Austin. It's why I moved there. Yeah. I, I moved yeah. specifically to Austin to open it because there was a community to do yeah. it. And to customers it. were were willing to try a food truck where in other cities it's like, oh, a food right. truck, I don't know, what, you know right. what's going on. Right. Uh, right. But right. in Austin, you almost prefer it, Everything. right? People down yes. there are like, Let's do that. Yes, yes, let's do it. For my birthday one year, we went to, we did like a, my mom set up this really fun um, scavenger hunt all over <laughs> South Congress. Really? Wow. Yeah, yes. What so a great mom. The, if she's what? the best. She is the absolute <laughs> wow. best. And like, so one of the, one of the challenges was, you know, uh, go to the South Congress hotel and you can't speak, but take a picture with one of the staff that works there and so it was like just all these fun little adventures up and down south congress and order coffee in a different language that kind of thing wow. um and then at the end of the day we went and finished at gordo's donuts what a creative mom you have yeah, i gotta say she's that's, the best uh, that's pretty yeah. cool yeah. yeah that sounds like something i would want to do okay i'm 42 yeah. so that'll tell <laughs> yeah. you it was, uh, that it was sounds so fun. fun yeah yeah it was really fun <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Is your mom was she, your mom a foodie as well? Like, does she get okay. you into food and all of this stuff or what? <laughs> okay. So glad that you asked. My mom cannot cook to save her life. <laughs> I love her. She can do so many other things. She is just the world's best mom, but she cannot cook. So I grew up on 
boiled broccoli, boiled cauliflower, boiled <laughs> green beans, not even steamed with like Give seasoning it. <laughs> on it. It was boiled broccoli, <laughs> baked chicken breast with okay. salt because pepper is too spicy. So, Damn. you know, we just, we stuck, we stuck to the salt. Oh, man. And it wasn't until we moved to Austin um, that my aunt, my dad's sister, my aunt, Melissa, my amazing aunt, Melissa, she moved in with us because she moved from California to come to Austin to live with us. Yeah. And, um, my mom was like baking a potato in the microwave, <laughs> like I had wrapped it, <laughs> had wrapped it in like wet paper towels to like steam it oh, in the wow. microwave. Okay. Wow. And my aunt walks down and she's like, what is going on? <laughs> and she's like, let me, let me cook. And so she made these oven roasted potatoes that she cut into wedges and she put rosemary, thyme, garlic salt, garlic powder, onion powder, fresh cracked black pepper. And I remember like I, I tasted this and that was the moment that food became a passion of mine <laughs> and was having those oven that. roasted potatoes. And so then from there, you know, she, my aunt, Melissa, she's really the one who taught me all about cuisine, all about food, took me to all the restaurants. And That's so awesome. my mom and I, we, I used to dance with ballet Austin. And so usually it's so funny. We always have this joke with for my mom every day five o'clock rolls around and she's shocked that it's dinner time because she just <laughs> it's, it's she, she's shocked that dinner That's comes good. every day and so oh you know, again be, she's like oh, again, yeah. here. Oh, yeah. shoot. <laughs> oh, what do we got at home what can I pull out of the freezer That's and funny. um so coming home from dance I'd be like mom what's for dinner and she goes oh shoot I forgot about that so we you know my my dad and brother I've Poor guys, they'd have to fend for themselves. And my mom and I would go try out a restaurant downtown Austin. And um, I remember we'd go to Fix. Have you ever heard of, have you been to yeah. Fix at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'd go to places like Fix because that's all downtown. And this was a few years ago now. So I know that it's, you know, really, there's so much has come there's a lot downtown. of yeah for sure a lot for of sure. things sure. Um, or we'd go to, you know, the original Whole Foods down there, which is just like my yeah. favorite. Absolutely. But we'd go, we'd go and try out a bunch of restaurants. And then on the weekends, my aunt and I, my dad and brother and my mom, we'd all go out to places to eat. And yeah. So my That's love awesome. for food, my love for food was born here in Austin for sure. Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah. No, your poor mother. I, I feel bad for her to be I honest. With you. Some people <laughs> just mom. don't, some people just I don't know. have it. And, and she is okay. one of the most, I mean, she is just one of the most incredible women and but unfortunately, and you know what? Not everybody can do everything. And unfortunately, it's just absolutely she can't cook. Look, there's okay. a reason. There's a reason. There's restaurants. Okay, <laughs> like th th let's be real. There's yeah. a reason yeah. that people, other people, cook food, and you go to them. You know, it's it's yeah. one of those things. So there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite thing to make? I mean, you you cook. You I read actually I you're into baking. More, I am. which I hate baking Cooking to be and honest baking. with you. I, I hate baking. Both. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. It's so it's really? too well, it's too, uh, for me, uh, you know, what I love about cooking is the, the creative, the, the sort of spontaneity The you can improvise a little bit more. There's a yeah. little get, there's a little give and take with baking. It's exact. Okay. It's a science yeah. and I, I respect it. Trust me. There's a, yeah. you know, all the restaurants I've ever worked or managed, you know, or kitchens I've run, you, you know, there's a reason you bring someone in that's, a, right. that's their specialty. To, to bake. This is yes. what they do. Yeah, there's a Absolutely. reason for it. It's an yeah. art and I can't do it. Yeah. So I'm, proud. Well, I'm proud of you. Thank you. My my dad, you know, when my aunt moved out, my dad, he's actually a very decent cook. So he taught me a lot about like, okay, we have this, we have this, let's make a meal out of it. He's the king of just, going I'm into the fridge, yes. whipping up whatever we have. Like he can go in and make a meal out of nothing. That's a so real cook. That is That's a real, a real he's cook. A, he is a good cook. That's awesome. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I love cooking. I love on my dad's side, my great grandpa is from Lebanon. So, um, oh, wow. I love, love Lebanese food. Yes. At middle middle eastern lebanese food sure. has my turkish heart. absolutely yes. mm -hmm. so i love i love eating and making that cuisine as well as mediterranean yeah. um 
And so, you know, but yeah, with baking, I, I love it. My, my, my grandma, she's a fantastic baker. Um, and so, you know, I learned a lot of my skills from her and I think I just, what I love about cooking and baking is that, you know, you get to experience it and you get to share it with people. Like I love baking and cooking for people and watching them enjoy it. That's the fun of it, you know, is, is watching them enjoy the fruits of your labor. And, um, I think one of my favorite things to bake is pavlova. I love, I love making pavlova. I make a really, I make a really (laughs) delicious pavlova with a, like a blueberry lemon compote on top. My God, look at you. The confidence is is key here, uh, by the way, Uh, to be real, it it really is a part of it. Cause you, that means you're going to put in the effort to make it right. Right. Because you're putting your name behind it. Like you said, Yeah. you'll stay for the first bite. As we yes. say in the kitchen, right? You'll stay around. Yeah. You, you know, it's a bad sign if a server quickly drops off the food and darts away, right. because like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Right. Why don't you want to be around uh, to watch <laughs> right. me get this right. first right. bite here? Or something, the first bite. something not yeah. up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Funny. You know, funny. Uh, last Christmas, I helped my mom host our first dinner party, and we had like probably twenty eight people come for like our, our holiday Christmas party. Yeah. And I, it was the first time that I like had, had to time all the food, you know, had to make sure everything came out at the That's same the real time. deal right there. Yeah. That's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily I had some people help me, but it was, I like, I planned well, out the menu of course. and, and it was so fun. I yeah. absolutely loved it. Like hosting wow. and watching people eat your food. It was yes. so great. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you can do a pop-up. I used to do pop-ups all the time. Uh, that's yeah. basically a catering event is what you're talking about. I used yeah. to do those all the time, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the timing is, uh, there's so many levels to it, you know? It's like, okay, people can, you know, you can cook a steak, great, but can you make 30 of them, right? And and, and part of a three-course meal for, yeah. for people. Okay, that now we're talking about a different thing here, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a much mm-hmm. different, uh, and mm-hmm. make it good. Right. You can't yeah. just, right. Is that, that's the key as well. Uh, no, right. that's awesome. That's awesome. Let, let's, uh, you know what, let's talk a little bit about your acting. How do you, yeah. how do you, do you take any of the same sort of, you know, techniques you take with cooking and baking and that sort of detail? Is that, are you the same sort of like actor that way? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, you know, I love telling stories. I absolutely love telling stories ever since I was younger. I, you know, building and creating worlds were my favorite thing. You know, um, I'd watch a movie and I'd memorize scenes from it and go into my room and reenact them and, you know, all of that. And so there's something so significant, just like with cooking, you know, sharing what you've created. And I, I love that aspect of film and cinema is you're creating this beautiful world. You're creating this piece of art for people to watch and to, you know, hopefully I love projects where people can really see themselves and there's humanity in it. And also of course the big, huge fun films like Marvel and Star Wars, where it's just like these huge (laughs) fantasy, amazing projects, but there's something so beautiful about sharing what you've created. Just like, just like with cooking. Wow. That's a great answer. I never, never thought about it that way. Yeah. That's really cool. Wow. That's really neat. What about uh, this project coming up? Like, okay, let's, let's get into this here. It's called, uh, let me make sure I get the name right here. Impeachment. This is part of the American crime story anthology series, right? Yes. Uh, The third third season. Mm -hmm. Third season. Yeah, exactly. Um, How, how did you get involved with this project and specifically like this role? Yeah. Well, you know, um, living in LA, you pursuing acting, you start to audition for projects. And this audition came um, about a year ago, actually. And, you know, went through the process of callbacks and all of that. And, you know, with with projects, you you do your best to audition and then move on and forget about the the role. And okay, um, interesting. Yeah, Yeah. just because that way, you know, so much yeah. You're not so much emotionally involved if they say no, that right. type of thing. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, exactly. And then that way you just have brain capacity for other things instead of being yeah. like, oh, I auditioned for this. I hope I get it. Ooh, I don't know. Wow. You know, so it just it makes sense. Yeah, you do your best to, of course, audition and move on. And so that's what I had done. I had auditioned and moved on. And then all of a sudden <laughs> I got the call and I was like, oh, I forgot that I Right. I auditioned for that. That's, that's awesome. That's funny. And, you know, of course you cry tears of joy and you're just so excited because it's, you know, you're, you get to work and you get to tell a story. You get to be a part of a project that's, that's telling a story. And um, so first day on set was amazing. The crew, cast, everyone really even shout out to crafty who you know keeps us fed and catering yeah. like really ev just everyone hair makeup wardrobe every single person who worked on this project was just a gem and it really could not have been a more exciting experience to be a part of no oh, that's awesome what was it shot uh, so i'm assuming shot during the pandemic yeah right? we how did that um, affect shooting yeah, you know, it was very interesting. I'm very thankful to the whole health and safety team that was a part of the project sure. because uh, yeah, everyone down, was, you know, getting tested and we had to wear all of our facial coverings and, um, you know, shields and everything. And I just really, they are such heroes and I'm very thankful for the health and safety team um, that we worked with on the project. And, you know, because they made it very easy for us to yeah. feel protected and safe in the environment. And um, yeah, it was, it was great. Do you feel it was, like it was that, challenging, uh, but it was, but yeah, it was, but that, it was, that's it was what I was going to ask. Like the, the, you know, how, how far into it does it like affect the creativity of it or, you know what I mean? Or yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, it just, it's just something that, you learn to work with and you adjust sure. and adapt to and you know because um right before you go on to the set and onto the scene you know you'll take it off the actors have permission to take it off and then you just put it on right after so okay you know yeah. it, it 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 really wasn't it wasn't too bad at all yeah that's it awesome just, it I just mean, was a part it's necessary. of it you know? yeah, yeah yeah totally yeah. Yeah, totally necessary you know totally had to be done um just an extra step another layer that y'all yeah. have to deal with uh to get it right. done which makes it all the more impressive honestly that the yeah. projects come out from the yeah. pandemic right all these projects yeah. are coming out it's like it makes it all the more impressive to mm -hmm. have gone through all that uh, mm -hmm. no that's that's awesome um so Okay, so, you know, this is a pretty serious role. I mean, pretty serious story, right? Like, how, how much did you know about this story with, you know, Monica Lewinsky and President Clinton before joining on to this role? Is this something they teach in school? Because when I, you know, this came out <laughs> yeah. when I was in high school. So, like, right, right. I lived it, right? So, like, right. for me, I mean, do they teach this stuff in school? I don't, yeah, well, <laughs> I, don't know. I, I obviously, you know, I wasn't born when it happened. And yeah. they never mentioned it in school. So, you know, when I, when I auditioned for the role, my mom and I, we sat down together and sort of reviewed the history and I dove in and did my own research and oh, to, okay, right to understand the story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Yeah. And there's definitely a lot, uh, you know, history with a lot of things to, to look at, right? It was, this is based off of a mm -hmm. book, right? By Jeffrey Tubin, if I'm, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. Uh, yeah. That's, a, uh, that's so cool. Um, and Monica Lewinsky's involved with this, yes. right? Executive yeah. producing, hands in on it. Uh, she you know, is she's an amazing a person, powerhouse. right? I oh, agree. My I agree. gosh, and I, I you know, I actually had the privilege of working with her um, before this project. Actually, oh wow, uh, I did. Yeah, I did a PSA, uh, an anti-bullying PSA, and it was her project. And, Good for you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, with BBDO and some amazing agencies and you know she is just one of the most powerful voices I have ever had the pleasure of meeting and how she That's speaks amazing. life and how she you know she's so confident and how she's taken what happened to her and used it to um, you know bring awareness and and educate people on the horrors of bullying you know, and how she promotes kindness. She just, she is such an amazing woman. And it was, it was, I'm very glad that I got to be a part of this project because hopefully it will give audience members, you know, a greater perspective, um, a, a bigger narrative than the one that was originally portrayed. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
I was going to ask you that, like, what do you think viewers are going to get out of this? So, yeah, look yeah. at that. Um, okay, wow, that's cool. That's that's great to know. Well, that's great to hear about Monica, uh, to be honest with you. I wish her all the best, and I think she's an amazing person. I know she's gone through mm -hmm. a lot, and the way she's managed to just stand so strong and still mm -hmm. help. I mean, it's, she's an inspiration for sure. She uh, is. She is yeah, such an inspiration. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I I'm really happy to hear, like, you're young, you're in this industry, you have such a great mindset, and I know that there needs to be some shifts happening. So it's really mm -hmm. nice to see like your attitude about things and and whatnot. Like for real, uh, yeah. that, that's Thank that's you. really powerful. Uh, Thank to be you. honest with you. Yeah, you, you know, you can make a difference in the industry because I try to do the yeah. same thing in, in the food industry when I was in it. And it was mm -hmm. uh, it was important to a lot of us in leadership positions to, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that those those sort of things happen and changes happen and you yeah. know positive things. Yeah. So no, that's really great. Yeah, thank um, you. Because, you know, at the end of the day, my my motto has always been kindness must win. And like if that. I can go through my day and make one person happier, then, hey, that day, that day was worth it. You know, if I can wow. share the joy and if I can love people where they're at, I mean, that's the greatest gift that we have is just to um, love, love others, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, is just to is just to love others. Couldn't agree with couldn't agree with that more. That's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So you also so you play Allison Tripp, right? I want to make sure I get the name yeah. right. Okay, yeah. which is uh, Linda Tripp. Tri Linda Tripp's uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you worked with Sarah Paulson. I think that woman is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I've loved amazing. everything she's ever done. Yes. I mean, yes, she blows me away. Talk about uh, another powerhouse. Absolutely, total powerhouse. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, working with her, how, how how that affected you. Yeah, I'll let you just take it from here. Really, uh, yeah, whatever you want. Well, I've I've said this before, but working with her it was like a masterclass. You know, a, an absolute masterclass in acting. And oh, wow. she. So is you were so watching. Kind. You were like, oh, okay, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what can I get out of this? <laughs> yeah. How can I watch her? Because you know, I like she. That she brings every character she plays is so truthful so truthful like there's not one moment where i'm like i did where i didn't believe her you know sure. as as linda and um it, it was it was it was such such an experience to watch her and she brought such detail um and focus to every part of every scene and always you know always was focused on everything that was happening on the set you know down to where this was sitting here this prop was over here you know I oh, said wow. this back here how does that how does that tie into this does this feel real if I enter you know enter here or if I sit here it just her her attention to every part to tell this story to perfection was was incredible to watch wow that's that's a that's what a compliment that's that's for her right like that's awesome yeah. and, and and you want to pick that up and you want to be like that as well yeah in a lot of ways i'm no, like okay awesome. moving forward in my own performances how can i you know Add take what this. yeah 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 to yeah. that degree no. mm -hmm. sure um so okay so great so like it, you know she is throwing out ideas and right because i've talked to different actors and i guess it, it just depends what set you're on and what's the script yeah. is and right like Absolutely. how much you can sort of add to it so that's great i guess you just bring ideas and see what people say about it right is that how it yeah. works uh, okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense uh, it's like r d cooking right you're just like well what do you guys think if i do this yeah. what you know yeah. well let's try it there's only yeah. in cooking when somebody says something that the best answer yeah. well, let's try it totally. well, there's no way to know till totally. we try there's no way to know and that was so fun working with some of the wonderful directors on this project was you know i'd work with them and, and we'd say well does that does that make sense let's try it yeah let's, let's see how that feels how does well, that feel no. well it feels good for me you know how does that feel for you yeah i think let's try this tweak that put that here that's why i love working with directors and the directors on this project have been phenomenal and um that's awesome. And so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Uh, you know, I saw this uh, thing about Stanley Kubrick recently. Do you know who that is? The director, mm -hmm. Stanley Kubrick? Okay, mm -hmm. so he did a movie called Full Metal Jacket back in the 80s. It's about okay. the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Yeah. And um, famously, he would make the actors do like, 
you know, not all the time, but like over a hundred takes for a particular mm-hmm. scene, right? Which mm-hmm. was it's kind of that's kind of crazy, right? The Shining too, mm-hmm. like he was just sort of mm-hmm. famous for that. Mm-hmm. And his thing was his reasoning. I found pretty interesting was that he wanted to make them do the line so much mm-hmm. that you really got tired of it, and then mm-hmm. the lines just came out. Came out. That you know yeah. what I mean? It just you weren't thinking. You weren't making a choice. He would take mm-hmm. away their 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 want, desire, and even just subconsciously, you want to make a choice in the scene. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm going to take away all of that. I'm going to tire yeah. you out so much that you're just going to do this. Just I, found, do I found that pretty interesting yeah. because the actors don't know. Like, they would he wouldn't be specific with them. He would just say, nope, do it better. And mm-hmm. <laughs> they're like, what does that mean? Do How does that like, work? <laughs> yeah. And so they just yeah. do it over. And, you know, I don't know. What do you think about that? Does yeah. that, would that bother you? I, I don't know. No, you know, I definitely, there is so much to be said about throwing the lines away. I think that the most organic, natural performances come when you just release it. And yeah. so uh, there's this this acting tip that I got to just shake yourself out. It's like when, if I was a dancer and before you go on stage, you just give yourself a quick shake. And it's the same thing sometimes with performances, at least for me, you know, I just, I just got to let myself and get myself out of my head and just let the emotions flow, let the lines flow, you know, and, um, but that is interesting. And I definitely could see after a hundred takes, you would get so tired of that, of those stinking lines that you're just like, forget it. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that away. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think there were definitely some moments like that on American Crime Story where we would do a scene now so many times from so many different angles, right? Because you're, yeah. you're wanting to get all the coverage um, and that cinematic to to endear the audience and you do that a lot through the beautiful cinematography and um and so yeah for sure there's just those moments where you're like I've done this now 50 times I just <laughs> we're just gonna throw it away and see what happens and sometimes the most beautiful things happen in those moments absolutely yeah wow that's yeah that's that's crazy I I you know that would be just so insane to be uh I've done extra work like on movies uh, many yeah. many years ago uh like for M. Night Shyamalan because I used to live up in Philadelphia yeah. and wow yeah, yeah well I did Lady in the Water it was like the first okay. movie where it was like okay maybe this is going his stories are going down a little bit but but mm. anyway I, I loved it I I had a great time he was amazing just to watch mm-hmm. from afar uh the amount of detail like you said that mm-hmm. he would he was so particular about even the extras in the background I was like mm-hmm. oh my mm-hmm. god like, mm-hmm. I'm literally a blur in the background mm-hmm. and you're concerned mm-hmm. about me like this is yeah. crazy um you know for me it was like well time like how much time can you actually have for for this mm-hmm. this is five seconds and we've spent eight hours on it eight I'm thinking, hours how does this it? work yeah. I, you know so I get <laughs> lost in all that like when you're on this set do you did it feel like you were on a movie because it's shot very cinematically like you watch the trailer yeah it's oh, just so yeah. cinematic so it it felt like that yeah. like just like this huge thing Mm -hmm. yeah that's absolutely yeah Yeah, it was it was so it was so great and some of my favorite days were when you know we had the wonderful background cast um because you know you get you're like wow we're really making this yeah you know we're we are making a project and that's cool it's so fun to interact with them and see them do their thing and it's it's great I mean, it for me, it required no skill. I just stood there, like I, I, <laughs> you I just, just stood, stood there, there drinking, drinking coffee or whatever. Yeah, I, honestly, it was really awkward for me. I'm not an actor. I just thought it was just yeah. an opportunity to work on yeah. some set. I was like, oh, this totally. is cool. You know, totally. I'll do this. But mm-hmm. it felt weird to talk to somebody, but I couldn't talk to them. Right. So I had to, yeah, you got to you got to pantomime it. I, I did not like that at all. I was like, I, this is so awkward. Like, you know, do you think this is awkward? I think this is awkward. Right. And and that would actually right. be our conversation. I would be like, this is awkward. I, this is so weird. And, and it makes me have so much respect for people like yeah. yourself. Anybody that can do that, that can really... Uh, because it's not it's not easy i think a lot of people armchair watch movies too like ah oh, come yeah. on i could do this stuff. no right. you can't right. no, no right. you can't <laughs> there's a reason they're up there right they're professionals they, they do it right they study this yeah it's yeah. really a lot of preparation right you think that's mm-hmm. what can make you really good on set that you've just prepared so much yeah. and ready to just go anywhere is that really yeah. the key you think yeah i mean you know what's been so fun for me is okay 
I always knew I wanted to act, but then moving to LA and yeah. taking acting classes really helped me to fall in love with and appreciate the craft as a art form, as a I craft. See. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it is, it's, it's finding your niche of how you prepare as an actor, um, how you prepare a scene. And, you know, at the same time though, putting in all this prep work to then just throw it away and just see what happens and work <laughs> with a director and work that. with your fellow castmates, you know, to create something beautiful. That's cool. That's really cool. I love, I, I heard Matthew McConaughey say that in an interview about some some project he was working on. He's yeah. like, I, d I just knew everything so forwards and backwards that mm -hmm. when I got set, I could throw it all away if, mm -hmm. I, if I wanted to mm -hmm. and do this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, mm -hmm. what, what a, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, mm -hmm. He's giving away all the secrets. Yeah, what, are you, yeah, Matt, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> but really it's not because the, the hard work and all that, right? Like that's, that's, yeah. that's where it's at for sure. Um, you know, I don't know if we can talk about this. So I'll bring it up and you decide if you want to comment on it. But I've seen okay. Sarah getting some, you know, a little backlash for, you know, having to wear some prosthetic or whatever during the show. And not that I really want to talk about that, but I thought just as an actor, is that something you have to consider going into role? Is that where acting's going? Where, yeah, you know, I'm not in it, so I don't really think about it, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah. is that something you concerned about or? Yeah, I know. you know, I like I wasn't a part of those decisions and everything. So I think that she did a fantastic job. So. Of course. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I just mean, like for yourself, like, is that something you when you're picking a role? Like, how do you pick a role? Do you stick to certain roles? Are there roles you're like, you know what? That's not the type of person I want to play or I don't yeah. know. I mean, how does that work exactly? Yeah, well, you know, I am so thankful for my amazing team. Um, and, you know, we've all had conversations about what kind of roles I see myself playing, you know, what okay. sort of characters I would love to play and uh, stories that I'm drawn to, you know, and I so see. from and then from there, you just you start auditioning and yeah. you start, you know, pursuing, of course, uh, when an opportunity comes for way, your way, you want to jump on it. And if it's a great opportunity, um, but right now, you know, I'm still in this space where I'm like, Hey, you know, a character is a character. And if you can sure. find a way to make it true for you, then that's, that's, that, that's the fun part. But of course you, there are those, those roles that are like, yes, that is yeah. the role of, of, of my dreams. <laughs> sure. No, that makes sense. Uh, for sure. Um, you, you've heard the term, what is it? No, no small roles, just small mm -hmm. actors. Is that true? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you find that to be a true statement? No small roles, just small actors. Yeah, I don't know. I think your job as an actor is to is to just take what's been given to you and make it true. You know, make it as yeah. true as you can possibly make it. Love that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No matter what your piece is in the. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Totally no matter agree. what. No matter what you you could have one line, you could have zero lines. Sure. As long as you've made it true for yourself, then it'll be true for the audience. Bam. And plus it's how you get up. Like it's part yeah. of the, it's like in a kitchen. Yeah, you just, it's like, you just hey, gotta, listen, you're doing. I started, yes, just like in a kitchen. Listen, I started as a hand model. <laughs> That was, that was my first, my first big break in Hollywood. <laughs> How did someone I decide, was, Hey, you I, have great hands. Is that all it is? Is that where it starts? You've got great hands. Yeah. Let's use your hands. <laughs> I, I went in for this commercial audition for this toy company. And, um, you know, they were like, you know, we don't really, uh, I don't, we don't think you're the right look for us, but we just love your energy. And so <laughs> would you come and be a hand model for our products? And so it was really fun. I got to go to set and everything, but here's the thing. This was what was so funny was I could not, they were wanting me to, you know, the camera was on my hands and you're like twisted and contorted to, to oh. get the, to get the, <laughs> to get the product to show, but your face isn't in it. And so you're bent over backwards to try and display this, this product. And I could not, it was this bracelet thing and I could not get it to do what it was supposed to do. And, <laughs> and, and so I didn't even make it in the commercial. Actually I did, but all I did was just, it was like my <laughs> hand went like, ting, and you know, it had the audio. Ting, yeah, and it yeah. was just like a little. Ting. And so, you know, it's fine. 
but I still had so fun, met the greatest people, you know, yeah. had the best experience. And it just, it's like, you just, you take what's given to you and you make it, you make it fun and you, you, you know, you're grateful for it. And, and I just always, you know, I love meeting people on set. That's just my favorite thing is That's awesome. how can I love people here? How can I, you know, share joy with people here on set and, uh, you know, just hearing people's stories and connecting with them and, you know, uh, getting to know them and building relationship because everything starts with relationship. You know? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Again, you have such a great attitude about this stuff. It's great. <laughs> Thank, you. That, Thank you. Part, you know, part of any industry you're in is networking and just being yeah. someone good to work with. Sure. You know, yeah. that can get you work as well and opportunities. I think I think that's a big part of it because I see that get lost in the restaurant industry, and I know that happens mm -hmm. in you know the acting industry. I mean, it has mm -hmm. to. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. same, same as anything. Um, it's not just the work, but also how you do the work as well that, that matters mm -hmm. too so no that's awesome you have such a great yeah. attitude with it thank you are there thank you. are there any projects you have coming up that you're excited or looking into or anything you can say i don't know i you know future stuff yeah. Or, you know. yeah you know i am currently working on another project unfortunately i can't disclose any information about it right is that, now that's kind of cool to say though in a way right know, that's kind of that's kind of cool, cool like, to say that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know i'm like I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know. but um yeah yeah so i'm currently in texas filming right now for it oh um, great yeah so i awesome. got to go, i'm going out this weekend to maybe go to a restaurant or something um please we'll support them right now they, they yes. need all the help uh yeah order get, so. take yes. away all the things Yes, absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. No, that's yeah. amazing. Um, anything about the, the American, um, oh gosh, I'm saying it just, it's, it's just impeachment. I want to yes. make sure I get that right. Impeachment, impeachment trial, American crime story, impeachment. That's mm -hmm. right. Impeachment, mm -hmm. American crime, anything I didn't, uh, it's 10 episodes, right? Yeah. Um, 10 episodes. week, week by week. Mm -hmm. Uh, first episode is September FX. 7th. Yep. FX. FX. And I believe Hulu. FX and Hulu. Yeah. Right on. Is there anything about it I didn't bring up that you wanted to throw in about it? I don't know. I, no, you, know. you really, you really nailed it. Yeah. We, we touched it, on it everything just was, we needed to say. It just was such a fun project to be a part of, really. So fun. No, that's yeah. all. I can't even imagine. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a absolutely wonderfully bright future. So I wish you all the best uh, with any Thank future you. projects. And this one, I'm excited uh, Thank you. You know, to watch this and, and follow yeah. it along. So, uh, Thank you I, so I'm, are you going to be doing the same thing? Is that your sort of deal too? Are you going to be watching every episode as it comes out? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm super excited, you know, just to watch it because yeah. everyone, everyone worked so hard on this project and um, just, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a great, a great show to watch. Very intriguing. I mean, it, it, and very I'm a big Clive Owen fan. To yeah. So the huge Clive Owen fan. Yeah. And uh, he had on the prosthetics and he totally, they, yeah. Listen, he did a movie a long time ago. Look, it was called Croupier. It's one of the first movies mm. he ever did. It's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah. He's, he's so amazing. Yeah. And Eddie Falco, the yeah. woman who plays, uh, just the, the woman who plays Monica Lewinsky. She's amazing. She oh my is gosh. amazing. Love I her got to work so with much. her just, just for one day. I got to work with her, but she is the sweetest, kindest, most genuine human being. I mean, she, she is so sweet and, you know, uh, make sure everyone on set feels seen and heard and, yeah, she, she's really just such a sweetheart. Sounds like you were surrounded by a lot of great people and this, you know, sounds like a great project and I'm really excited for you. And yeah, we're really excited to catch up yeah. on all this. And uh, thank you for all the shout outs for the Austin places. They'll appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so. Everyone go to all of the places in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be disappointed with our food. You know, one more thing. I, I think Austin has better Thai food than L.A. I'm, I'm not even joking because I have tried to find a good Thai restaurant in LA and I've been to a couple, you know, and sure. they're very decent. Like I, I've really enjoyed, but I just, I love Austin's food so much. <sighs> There's a reason that Texas got its own, uh, James Beard, uh, category. Oh yeah. All by itself. I mean, there's a reason For Texas sure. is ridiculously yes. food, foodie place. Uh, yes. 
for Uchika. sushi. We're, we're, we're having uh, Tyson Cole on. Uh, he's the chef behind Oh, Uchika yes. And Uchika. Yeah. He's amazing. That he restaurant is, amazing. is just. I worked with him briefly. He's ridiculous. I learned a lot of, you yeah. know what I learned from him? The number one thing I took away from working with Tyson is I went in before working. I wanted everything on a plate to be laid out perfectly. Mm -hmm. It was very important mm -hmm. to me. I was very methodical about it. Mm -hmm. Tw tweezer cooking, we call it in the, in the yeah. industry. Where they, okay. they use the you know? yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. all about totally. that. He, he totally. was not. He is not like that. Mm. He's very much, dude, what are you doing? Just let it go. Just let it go. Just just mm. throw it on the plate and where it falls, it falls. What it does, it does. And he had this very, you know, just raw, raw, you know, yeah. attitude toward it. And I didn't think he would considering the type of food it is and how methodical mm. it is at the same mm -hmm. time. It's very raw and open, kind of like the acting thing you're talking about. You know, exactly. it's, well, you see these connections so many parallels. Yes. yes, I love it. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Great shout outs for all that. Uh, again, they're going to appreciate that. So again, my best to you on this project. So thank amazing. You. Thank you uh, so much. We wish you all the best. So thank you for taking yeah. the time. It's and, been a pleasure. Yeah, I, awesome. You're awesome. Your podcast is great. I love what you do here. So thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, this was great, Emma. Thank you, uh, Becca. I don't know if you can hear us on there. Um, thank yeah. you so much. Thanks, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the end credits. This is everyone responsible for making the show happen. Executive producer, Sebastian Sauerborn. Podcast manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing manager, Caroline Grape. Video and audio editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail designer, Marco Vukovic. Social media manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing image quotes, Jay Apuya. Social media videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time, 